The Canon R1 is the fastest camera that Canon has ever made. It's built to enable sports photographers to capture images at up to 40 raw photos per second. After getting the R1, one of the first things I did was to test its buffer size, which determines how many continuous photos you can shoot in a sequence before the camera stops taking photos. Here's the good news. The actual size of the R1 buffer is roughly double that of the R3. And that's a huge improvement because the larger the buffer, the more images you can capture from a sequence of images. Here's a quick chart showing the results of my tests. With the R3, you could shoot around 150 raw photos at 30 frames per second before filling up the buffer. In the R1, that number jumps to 360 raw files at 30 frames per second, or 257 at 40 frames per second. At 20 frames per second, that number jumps all the way up to 1,362 photos, which is ridiculous. If you go into the R1 camera manual, you're going to get two different charts. One for the mechanical shutter and one for the electronic shutter. The nice thing about these charts is that is they're very accurate. They pretty much mirror exactly what I saw when testing the buffer. Now you might be asking yourself, who would ever need that many frames from a sequence? Well, sports photographers, that's who. During a big play, we try to capture the entire sequence of action because one, you never know what's gonna happen during a sequence or which image will become the shot. And two, we turn many of these long sequences into GIFs, or is it GIFs? For social media posts and for videos. I always prefer to have the ability to capture more images than I actually need so that in the edit, I can choose the best ones it's either that or I have to go buy a DeLorean so I can go back in time and get the shots that I missed. I especially notice buffer issues during long football plays such as a running back scoring after a big run and then celebrating with his teammates in the end zone. Usually it's during that celebration that I run out of buffer space and miss some of those key moments. Cameras can capture photos faster than they can write them to storage media like CF Express or SD cards. So rather than slow down the capture frame rate, manufacturers have built into the camera small but insanely fast internal memory drives that can temporarily store the images. We call this the camera's buffer. It's important to understand that the recording of an image happens in two stages. The initial flow of data goes to the buffer very quickly, but moving the image from the buffer to the actual CF Express card happens at a much slower rate. The problem is, is that when the buffer gets full, the camera has to stop taking photos and wait for space to become available in the buffer before it can receive new images. The actual number of frames that you can get in a buffer is highly variable. It depends on how many frames you are capturing per second, your ISO, the shutter speed, the ambient temperature, your picture style, the autofocus mode, the subjects that you photograph, and probably the current phase of the moon. In the R5, the R3, and the R5 Mark II, we've been using Type-B CF Express version 2 cards. Version 2 means that the cards have a maximum transfer speed of 2 gigabytes per second. CF Express Type-B version 4 cards came out early in 2024, and they have a maximum transfer speed of about 4 gigabytes per second, which is crazy fast. Now that speed is what's theoretically possible, but each card has different read and write speeds, as well as sustained transfer rates and minimum transfer rates. Since the R1 is a new camera, I was hoping that it would take advantage of these new version 4 CF Express cards. But after a full week of extensive testing, I've come to the conclusion that it doesn't matter what card you use you'll capture exactly the same amount of frames before filling up the buffer. The cards have absolutely no effect on the initial buffer size. It's the camera that limits you. But this is where it gets interesting. Once the camera's buffer is full, the images transfer to a CF Express card at a different rates. If we run this again at half speed, you can see that the CF Express version 4 cards clear the images from the buffer faster than the version 2 card. So I decided to do a torture test on the cards, something that would happen during a game while I'm capturing a very long sequence. I held down the shutter for 30 seconds to completely fill up the buffer and see exactly how many frames I could capture after the buffer was filled, which shows us how fast the R1 can clear the buffer space with different cards. It looks like the v version 4 cards can clear the buffer faster, which resulted in them being able to capture 80 more images than the version 2 card. That's significant because it means less missed shots at the end of the sequence. Another benefit of version 4 cards is that they will decrease the time it takes to download your images to your hard drive. For a quick test, I pulled together a folder of 50 gigabytes worth of images and copied them both to and from the version 2 Sony card and the version 4 OWC card. You can see how much faster the 4.0 card is, and this is with a USB 3 card reader. Now, if you have a new USB 4 card reader and port, it should be even faster. So if you generate a lot of data, the new CF Express cards will significantly speed up your ingest times, especially if you're capturing video. Now, if you're running into your camera's buffer, there's a few things that you can do. First of all, you can always shoot at a slower frame rate, which will make a huge difference. You can also change your file type from raw to compressed raw, which will allow you to capture roughly twice as many images before filling up the buffer. I also have a few suggestions for Canon. 
I'm assuming the ability to use CF Express version 4 cards is a hardware issue, so let's make sure that all future cameras are version 4 capable, so we can benefit from that speed bump that clears the buffer faster. You can also double the size of the physical buffer, which would pretty much solve any issues that we have right now. While we're talking about my wish list, there's a few things that you can do right now to the R1's firmware to help sports photographers deal with buffer issues. First, I don't ever want to have the camera stop capturing photos during a long sequence. I would love to have the option to tell the camera that when the buffer is 75% full, it should drop down the frame rate from 40 frames a second down to 20 frames per second so I can keep shooting. But make sure and allow us the freedom to customize that. Some would want it at 50%, others at 90. Maybe they would want to drop it down from 40 frames a second to 30 frames per second. Another solution is to improve the mechanism that lets us know when the buffer is getting close to full. Right now you just have the little number in the viewfinder that counts down to zero, which is the point when the camera stops capturing images. When I'm shooting a sequence, I'm more worried about following the action and keeping things in focus than looking at that tiny, almost invisible number. Why not insert a yellow frame that appears around the border of the image when you have filled up 75% of the buffer, and then it can turn red when the buffer is completely filled. Having that visual cue would help me know when to stop hammering my sequences in order to save space for the celebration. With all that being said, the buffer on the R1 is awesome, but not perfect. If you're upgrading to the R1, you should be able to use your current CF Express cards just fine. But if you want to get a small but significant performance boost and a huge workflow boost, check out the new CF Express version 4 cards. If you want to see more content like this, go ahead and check out our full review of the R1 where we do a deep dive into its autofocus capabilities and action priority AF. Now, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. But otherwise, we'll see you on the sidelines.